What's up guys, welcome back to Boost Up Broken and you might be a bit confused by the title of today's video um, yeah I did remove the engine from my Nissan but before I tell you all about that here is some time lapse footage of us removing it and then you'll jump back to me in the future and I'll explain to you why I've done this and um, hopefully bring you in the loop so enjoy the, enjoy the time lapse So you join me here staring at my empty engine bay um, and as you can see the engine's no longer in there it's now over there on a pallet so this might seem a little bit weird but the logic behind this is originally when I put together the RB in the S13 it was more gonna be sort of like a casual street car cruise around go to meets and stuff like that um, well I kind of had that last year so now I'm kind of at the point where or last season sorry like last summer but I'm now kind of at a point where I can't really I can make more power but I can't really do anything competitive with this because the RB is a heavy engine this chassis was never meant for that it works and for drift car it works because front heavy grip and then loose on the rear that works pretty good but this season I'm thinking of going for more track car kind of thing so you might be thinking, why didn't I just get a different car, you know? Sell this one, buy a different car. Well, you know, that that's just not me. I like this car. This car's amazing. I love the looks of it. It looks great. So basically, <laughs> I'm coming at you from this video to tell you we're going to be putting a different engine swap in this engine bay. Now you might be thinking the obvious option would be the SR20, but you might remember recently I bought an MX-5 and drove it around, absolutely loved it. The one flaw was I didn't really like the chassis, like the body style of the MX-5. It was a bit small, like didn't really have the stance. I could have got it there, but I already have this, which has the stance I like. So in my mind, it makes more logistical sense to take this engine out, which by the way, these RVs have literally doubled in price since I purchased them. And I'm going to take, and bear with me on this, this sounds crazy, I'm going to take an MX-5 engine, the 1.8 litre like my one that I had, and I'm going to put it in here. So, again, sounds crazy, but like I said, this RB25 is now worth twice what it was when I put in. So, the plan is, sell this, sell the gearbox, and then that will leave me with a whole stack of money to then go bang. And if you don't know, MX-5 parts are almost hilariously cheap. You can pick up an entire engine with ancillaries and everything on it with wiring like as it came out of the engine bay for like 200, 250 pounds. Bear in mind, this engine in the same state is more like 2,500. So it's like 10 times the price. So, I think you should be starting to see my logic now. I could keep that, make more power, but it would still not be the greatest engine for what I'm, I want to do next season. Or I could sell that, recoup a whole bunch of money, more than I, I actually spent on it, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not more than I spent on it, but a good chunk. And then an MX-5 engine into this would literally be half the, roughly half the cost of selling that. So basically that's what I'm gonna do. We've got the engine out, as you can see. Um, 
and we are going to redo a few things in the engine bay that I didn't like having with the RB, um, like run new brake lines, run new power steering lines, because last time I kind of just made it work. This time I'm trying to go for like full, there's, there's going to be a lot more space in the engine bay, because obviously two less cylinders, much smaller engine, 1.8 litre versus 2.5. So you're going to see a lot more of it, the engine bay itself. So I'm going to try and like make it look nice and, you know, go from there and see what we can come up with. So pretty much for the rest of this video, all I'm going to be doing is, as you can see down the sides here, from the RB and just being there and driving it, the dirt is unreal. So I think I'm literally just going to push this thing outside, degrease the absolute life out of it, and then just give it a good old wash down and then we'll have a nice clean basis to start from when we actually start putting together the new engine for this. I'll get into like... I'll get, I'll get into like how I'm going to mount it and do all the exhaust stuff. And don't worry, it won't be just an NA 1.8. I am definitely going to turbocharge it. They'll make 280 horsepower roughly, um, just standard. But then the weak part is the conrods. So we may end up putting them new rings, new bearings, and a set of conrods in it. Just so we can make sort of in the 350, high, high 300s, mid to high 300s range. Um, but that's all I'm going to tell you for now. We'll get into all the other stuff in the future videos. Uh, so for now, I'm going to throw the camera on the tripod, uh, clean this dirty girl down, and we're going to get started on the new engine swap for 2020. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the sub make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that like button to show me how amped up you are for this. I know it's a bit weird compared to like most stuff that people do with these, but. You never know, this could be, I could be the pioneer for the MX-5 swap. So, I guess enjoy me foaming my engine bay up and then washing it down. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we will either be showcasing a shitload of parts that I've bought for this thing. Or trying to get the engine that I've purchased for it nicely in there. Which I haven't actually purchased yet, but by the time you see the next video I probably will have them all. Maybe try and get it in the engine bay by the end of that video. But yeah, see you next time on Booster But Broken.